The wife of Ottawa Senators Captain Eric Carlson is raising allegations of online harassment. She's asked for an order of protection against Monica Carrick. She's the longtime girlfriend of Senators forward Mike Hoffman. The entire story of the collapse of the Ottawa Senators can be saved for a whole nother video, but a big reason as to why the team spun on their downward spiral was due to an event that was reported during the summer of 2018, when it was announced that Melinda Carlson, wife of Eric Carlson, was filing harassment charges on Monica Carrick, the wife of Carlson's teammate, Mike Hoffman. Allegedly, Melinda stated that Monica was stalking the couple, constantly sending hurtful messages, wishing, quote, that someone would take out both of Carlson's legs ending his career, and perhaps the worst claim of the bunch, making fun of the death of their unborn child. Now, for those who didn't know, earlier that year, the Carlsons sadly announced they lost their son one month before his due date, shocking the hockey world that became instantly full of remorse. For someone to not only comment negatively on the issue, but to make fun of such an issue is extremely disrespectful. Of course, both Monica and Hoffman denied Melinda's claims, but numerous wives of other Sens players took to Twitter and weren't surprised at all. Just take Marley Hammond, who tweeted out, quote, If you only knew how unsurprising this actually is. Horrible. Just horrible. Days later, it was rumored that Eric and Mike met in a parking lot and attempted to settle their differences until things went south. This caused a massive shift in the locker room and in management as well, as everyone knew that both players could no longer be on the same team with one another. Hoffman would be dealt first to San Jose, but would quickly be flipped to the Panthers, and ironically, Carlson too would be sent to the Sharks, except he actually stayed. Although the case was ultimately dismissed, bad blood was still fuming between the players, as during their first meeting as new foes, Hoffman attempted to fight Carlson literally any chance he got. Hoffman even admitted to it, stating, quote, I chased him around and kept asking and asking. He wouldn't do it. He kept saying, I'm not fighting you. Maybe you should have taken the hint, Mike. But it seems that, thankfully, the two have put their beef behind them and have focused on playing the game. Mike and Eric aren't the only teammates to have feuded off the ice, however, as a soon-to-be record holder had a feud of his own. At the time of recording, Patrick Marlowe is about to break Gordie Howe's record for the most games played in NHL history, an outstanding accomplishment that is respected by many, and Marlowe himself has been loved and respected by basically everyone throughout his career, but some former teammates are too keen on him, Jeremy Roenick in particular. Roenick and Marlowe were only teammates for two seasons, and Marlowe never showed any displeasure towards Roenick, so it threw a lot of people off when Roenick went out of his way on an NBC broadcast to to insult Marlowe after a San Jose loss. Unbelievable comeback by Detroit, but an unbelievable poor effort by Patrick Marlowe. A gutless, gutless performance by Patrick Marlowe. Z z z count them. <laughs> Zero points in this series, and he had a game like that. I'm, we'll talk about that later, but wow, Detroit, unbelievable. Marlowe was seemingly unfazed by Jeremy's remark, until his book came out, that is. As Roenick wrote about the five players he hated in his career, and he stated that not only did he hate Marlowe's playing style, but brought up a time where he went to his house to tell him to play with more heart. At this point, Marlowe had enough firing back at Roenick. He said Roenick has his own agenda, and then followed it up by stating, quote, to say I don't care about my play or winning or being gutless is absurd. I wouldn't have left my home at 14 years old to play a game I didn't care about. Roenick's co-worker at the time, Mike Milbury, would intervene, making Roenick become furious, as he would get Roenick to state that Marlowe was actually doing well in the postseason. Roenick afterwards would then call Milbury a donkey in response. Mike Milbury's a donkey. He's a plain donkey. That's all he is. I wanted to do some personal digging and put Roenick's claims to the test. I found a chart that showed Marlowe and Roenick's statistics that I found extremely interesting. At the time the chart was made, Roenick had more goals than Patty in the regular season. But fast forward to the playoffs where Marlowe supposedly shows no heart, and you'll see that Marlowe has more goals, goals per game, and game winners than his buddy Ronick. This rivalry is essentially one-sided, as although Marlowe did fire back once, it was simply to explain his side of the story. Ronick decided to keep the shots firing, but Marlowe sort of just let his shots blow off, as most people know that Ronick loves a spotlight, similar to someone else in today's video. But before we get into that particular player, I gotta give a shout out to today's sponsor, Manscaped.
Manscaped took me up with a bunch of tools and formulations from their Perfect Package 3.0 kit, which comes with everything you need to keep trimmed, cut free, and smelling nice down there. The kit is highlighted by the Lawnmower 3.0, which is a one-of-a-kind trimmer that features a cutting-edge ceramic blade, which reduces grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin-safe technology. In addition, it also comes with a very helpful waterproof LED light that makes your shower shaves nice and easy. Inside the kit also comes the Crop Preserver, which is basically a deodorant for your family jewels. Pair the Crop Preserver with the Crop Reviver and you'll prevent excess sticking and sweating, feeling cool, relaxed, and relieved. Finally, Manscaped also threw in two free gifts as well. Gifts that include a pair of boxer briefs alongside of a handy travel shed bag. Personally, I felt a lot better since using Manscaped products and you can too. If this is something that may interest you, then head to manscaped.com and use my promo code IDGT for 20% off and free international shipping. The link will also be in the description description below. Once again, big thanks to Manscaped for the sponsor, now let's get back into the video. P.K. Subban has always been known as an entertainer. His outgoing personality can be enjoyable to some, myself included, however to others, not so much. Just ask Brendan Gallagher. As to him, although Subban's persona is contagious, it's also at times over the top. Now, many know that Subban wasn't really all that loved by his teammates in Montreal, as there were rumors that a feud was happening in the locker room between Subban and then Habs captain Max Pacioretty, but no one expected Brendan Gallagher to show the most displeasure towards PK, that is, until 2015, when a clip from a Montreal practice was released showing Gallagher and Subban pushing and shoving one another. You can also see Subban pushing the helmet off of Brendan as well. Gallagher would be confronted by numerous teammates who looked like they were making sure he was okay, and obviously, this clip raised some red flags. Now, throughout reading the comments, many believed that they were just joking around, which could have been the case, but after Subban was later traded to Nashville in 2016, Gallagher revealed that in fact there was a rivalry that was due to boil over. For this, we need to fast forward to November of 2017, the first of eventual two matchups between the Preds and the Habs, as after Gallagher would crash the net, Rene would shove him out of the way, causing who else but PK to get involved. A mini rumble would ensue with Gallagher giving Subban a face wash in the corner, and supposedly this was due to PK calling him short. And apparently this was just the beginning as it was the second meetup between the two that really caused chaos. Gallagher lined up Subban perfectly for a check, but stumbled after tripping over teammate Arturi Lekin and skate, causing him to fall face first onto the ice. Galli would also slap the puck, square into Subban's knee, taking the rebound and scoring off of it for his 20th goal on the year, giving Subban a piece of his mind on the way back to the bench. Of course, afterwards, fans wanted to know what just happened, causing a war of words to commence, with Gallagher stating, He was talking. I don't know what he does, but I don't know. Like I said, I don't know why we're talking about him. That's kind of what he wants. He came in here, tried to make it about PK Subban, which is, you know, what he does. Subban would then respond with, I, I didn't see a smile from him tonight. I, you know, I, to be honest with you, I, I just saw the blood dripping down his face after he tried to hit me and fell down, so I, I, that's what I saw, I didn't see anything else. Once PK was traded to New Jersey, a final altercation happened when Subban would fall awkwardly on Gallagher, causing the two to get into a scrum. Gallagher would also later spear Subban in the side, just to add an exclamation point. If you think that this Subban-Gallagher feud is surprising, however, prepare for this next one to shock you, as these two were actually never teammates at the NHL level, until they were both members of Team Russia. Say what you want, but we're counting this one, as the rivalry between Team Russia teammates Alex Ovechkin and Evgeny Malkin would often be forgotten about thanks to the Crosby vs Ovechkin narrative. It makes sense that one would assume a rivalry was formed between the two, as Crosby and Ovi were both first overall picks and even shared a rookie season, but Malkin was selected to pick after Ovechkin in 2004, and the two prior to were good friends off the ice. This was mainly because both played on the U18 team in Russia. While Ovi was in the NHL by 2006, Malkin was still in Russia, and the two would once again become teammates, even sharing a locker room as they'd played for the Russian national team. While overseas, Ovi told Malkin about the NHL, which would convince Gino to defect into the US after Russia's season was over. Malkin and Ovi, ironically, were named Rookie of the Year in their respective rookie seasons, and the two seemed just fine. Malkin was tearing it up with Sid the Kid, while Ovi was constantly on the highlight reel. But in 2008, seemingly out of nowhere, the friendship between Ovechkin and Malkin would come to a crashing halt. 
John Carlson, the man who took that hit from Orpik. You don't see a defenseman step up and hit a defenseman very often. Malkin goes down hard. This seemed odd, as Ovi showed no signs of hatred towards Gino at all, so most assumed it was out of pure frustration, until a few months later when Ovechkin decided to hit Malkin once again. Evgeny was so shocked that he would even state, quote, Ovechkin is a good player, but every time he hits me, I don't know why. And honestly, the fans didn't know either, until Malkin later revealed the story to the media claiming that in 2007, Ovechkin reportedly took a swing at Malkin's agent in Moscow, supposedly breaking his agent's jaw. Ovechkin obviously denied Malkin's claims and didn't explain why it happened, but with the Olympics on the horizon, someone had to squash the conflict if Team Russia had any chance at taking home the gold. Enter Ilya Kovalchuk, who decided to do a peace ritual to help Ovi and Malkin and their beef, and to many surprise, it actually worked. Alex and Evgeny would have fun at the All-Star game, and Team Russia was now confident and ready to go. Well, the 2009 playoffs came, and the two were right back at it again, hitting one another and getting into scrums. But unlike last time, this time it wasn't personal. The Penguins would ultimately win the series against the Caps, and Ovi even wished Gino good luck telling him to win the cup. And to make the story even more sweeter, Malkin and the Penguins did just that. The man they called Rod the Bod Brindamore was one of the most beloved figures in Philly sports at the time. His hard-nosed, blue-collar playing style made the city of brotherly love instantly fall in love with him. While in Philadelphia, Rod would be a consistent 30-goal scorer and was a key piece to the Flyers' offense. Enter Eric Lindros, who was supposed to become the next great one, but simply never met up to those expectations. However, that doesn't apply to the story we're about to talk about, as the only thing Lindros was supposedly scoring at the time was Brenda Moore's wife. Now, there's multiple stories that have been told, and no one really knows what really went down. Except for one thing, Lindros got his ass the most known rumor is that Brindamore found out about Lindros having fun with his wife and smashed a chair over his head WWE style, concussing Lindros. Rod would then immediately march up to Bob Clark's office, demanding either he or Lindros gets traded. Now, this seems absurd, as Rod would probably want to handle things the old-fashioned way, but the second, lesser-known rumor makes the first bit a bit more believable. As the other story says that other teammates found out before before Rod did, jumping Eric in the locker room, leading to Brindamore being traded. The rumored names to be involved in this supposed scrum include Rick Take and Mark Recchi. Regardless of which story is true, it resulted in the same outcome. Brindamore would get traded to the Hurricanes in exchange for Keith Primo, and the rest was history. In the end, despite the rumors, Rod got the last laugh, as Lindros would struggle with injuries for the remainder of his career, while Rod hoisted the Stanley Cup in 2006, being named the captain of the Canes, and having a boatload of success. Another Hall of Fame talent in today's video was caught in the middle of a teammate affair, but unlike the many stories of Eric and Rod, we think we know exactly how this final feud turned out. This final story starts with one signing. In 1994, the St. Louis Blues would sign Peter Nedved from the Vancouver Canucks, but because of this, St. Louis had to give up a compensation. St. Louis would offer up Craig Janney and a second round pick, but Vancouver insisted on getting Shanahan. An arbitrator determined Janney gets the boot, and he was shipped off to Vancouver, until being traded right back. St. Louis wanted Janney to remain on the team, as the duo of Janney and Shanahan was tearing it up offensively. But what was shown on the ice is not what was reality off the ice, as while the two were generating sneaky good chances, Shanahan was doing some sneaking of his own. As the story goes, Shanahan was talking to Janney's wife, Katherine, and even after Janney was traded to San Jose, Brendan was Still communicating with her. Four months after the swap, Shanahan would be dealt to Hartford, and it was believed it was due to the rumors being leaked. Catherine's marriage to Janney ended, and come 1998, her relationship with Shanahan went public, and the two would get married that year. Now, there's many things that could be argued with this story, as sadly, although the infidelity part is true, perhaps Brendan's trade out of St. Louis had nothing to do with the incident. Keep in mind that Shanahan was rumored to be a quote, locker room cancer, even during his time in Detroit, so perhaps the 
trade was just a pure Mike Keenan move, trading the star for a big, bulky, hard-nosed defenseman. Nonetheless, rumors like these can seriously damage one's reputation, as Shanahan, to many surprise, wasn't a first ballot Hall of Famer. The Hockey Hall of Fame even mentioned that it was partly due to the fact that they believe Brendan's trade out of St. Louis was due to the Jenny incident. Like in real life, hockey players follow the bro code, like most guys do, and they trust in their teammates both on and off the ice. So when an incident occurs that can damage the bond between one another, the consequences that ensue can be both damaging and extremely upsetting, as based on today's video, all it takes is one rumor, allegation, or exchange online to turn your closest teammates into your worst nightmare.